I think it's much worse than we letting on. Labels is merging. Whole entire department mm. is getting fired. All of the musicians are broke. This music Radio. shit is a rap. DIYers, it gets even uglier. DIY. DIYers, over the last week, Joe Button made some very interesting statements about the current condition of the music industry. Now, before he led up to this new statement, there was another controversial statement that he made where he said basically the female wave of rappers that we experienced with the sexy reds, the ice spice. He was basically saying that whatever that campaign was, it's done for not for them, but for anyone new in the rap field that wants to get in to this business. However, in response to all of the controversy and all the angry commentary that was pushed his way because of those comments, he responds. It's even worse than that, DIYers. <laughs> he says it's even worse than just the female rappers. He said, oh, you thought I was just talking about them. Joe, what do you what do you mean? Conversation took off when I said that about the women, but I think much worse. Like I try to come in here and filter my thought. I think much worse about the music business. Mm -hmm. I think all of them are over. I think all of your favorite artists are finito and finished. I don't think none of these people are making any coin from the music business. I think it's much worse than we letting on. We don't even have no way to get this type of information because it's all at the tippy, 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 tippy top and we don't talk to each other. And it's tech games. And it's tech games. They, they gearing up for whatever is to come and they're a lot earlier than, than I knew. They've been playing. They've been playing for, for years. Like seeing the, um, the big press outlets bigging up certain types and styles of music has been an indicator to me where musicianship performance like actually being good at being a musician has been cast aside for years and years and years but somebody gonna have to tell the truth and i'm gonna tell it in this channel i feel like we've done a really good job of bringing to light this phenomenon of major labels imbalance in promoting toxic type of music violent type of music it has always been at least with hip-hop there's always been an opportunity for two sides of the coin to exist right you'll have your street records you'll have your conscious records but it seems like as the years have passed it has been a primary focus on only one type of brand of music and it seems like even more so in the last few years and i feel like this is what parks is getting to in the last few years it feels like there's an extra emphasis on how low can we go how ridiculous can we go and if we put the machine behind it could it possibly be something that you know what i'm saying we could make some extra coins for before this whole damn thing flips upside down with the emergence of ai and other things slowly getting worse it's kind of opening the door for ai everything essentially i'm with you i think there's a focus on streaming ai i think there's a focus on just replacing you guys the artists beings, right i just think rap is cast aside the 50 years of hip-hop told me that how much of the pie there even is to distribute amongst artists tell me that the way albums don't drop anymore tells me that all of you artists getting your money from somewhere else tells me that Last year, no number one hip hop album for however long tells yeah, me that. Six, the months. number ones that came tells me that. Travis, Uzi, Drake. There's only seven. There's seven rappers mm -hmm. that they focus on. If you're not getting it touring or if you're not getting it through other means, mm -hmm. this Brady, music Brady shit up. is a rap. Somebody's gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Let's break it down. Now, he says something kind of in passing that I think that I noticed over the last few years and I and I wish there was more conversations around it but I, I give them the utmost props for bringing this up it always confused me how many of even the successful names or at least what I would see as successful had their hands in different pots now someone in business may say well that's smart that's what you do you got to reinvest your money however there were fields that didn't really make any sense real estate without any history uh knowing about anything when it comes to commercial property or just any of these things it's like what what is someone advising you like what is the actual goal and then you start finding that they start pushing these other streams of revenue with more energy and more vigor than their actual music career and these are not artists that have been well established they just found their first bag and with their first bag now it has all almost shifted entirely what their career really is. Now, 
on the front, everybody would see them as a rapper. But if you looked at their portfolio, it looked very much different because it is common knowledge that the, the music is not the thing that's generating income, especially when you think about streaming. And I'm glad all these conversations about streaming are becoming more and more frequented because streaming was supposed to be an answer to a temporary issue with piracy, right? When I say temporary, it's not to say that there's still not any piracy issues going on, but it was an immediate, when folks were panicking, streaming was the answer. Now, it has evolved somewhat in terms of the experience for the user, but to me, it seems like it has evolved very little in terms of the things and the tools that we actually need as artists to thrive as businesses. All of you, all, I, I'm saying all of the musicians are broke, relatively, relative to what you bring in. Now, I yes. do think that there is um, plenty of ways to make money as independence. Low overhead. Hello. It's not expensive to make these albums. You're making them at home or wherever. And you're building a reasonable fan base and you're selling physical and merch. They're, yeah, my conversation now is not really, about, it's a it's not really about independent acts. Yeah, okay. My, my conversation is about what's going on in the majors. They tricking y'all with the words in these contracts. They tricking y'all into thinking that y'all are real partners. They tricking y'all with the, hey, you own your stuff. <laughs> the, the recent layoffs tell me that. You don't see all these people getting laid off? Yeah. All yeah, you didn't see all these people getting laid off? Let's talk about it. This was also some major news over the last week. Universal Music Group, UMG, the same ones that just recently removed their music from TikTok, had to lay off over 800 employees. Sony Music, in addition to that, is expecting to lay off employees soon. Experts say many smaller artists signed to these labels could be in danger of being dropped. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. DIYers, it gets even uglier. Here's an article here on the Deadline website that says Universal Music Group, home of Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo, starts layoffs. Here's an ex explanation of why the layoffs even happened to begin with. As expected, layoffs commenced today at Universal Music Group, which includes Interscope, Republic, Capital, Def Jam, and Island, as well as Catalog Division, Universal Music Enterprises, and UMG Corporate. The layoff started after Wednesday's fourth quarter earnings call where CEO Lucien Grange talked of a strategic organizational redesign. That's cute corporate talk for downsizing. <laughs> Universal Music Group is planning what may become hundreds of job cuts to its recorded music division in its first quarter, which we're in right now, the company has more than 11,000 employees worldwide. If the layoffs occur, UMG would join a growing list of media and tech companies that have cut overhead. Warner Brothers, Discovery, Disney, NBC Universal, Google, and others have already trimmed. A UMG spokesperson told Music Business Weekly, we continue to position UMG to accelerate its leadership and music's most promising growth areas and drive its transformation to capitalize on them. Translation, the money getting a little bit tight. It's very uncomfortable. We need to try to figure out how to flip some of these investments that we thought was going to turn a profit. And now we got to let niggas go. Over the past few years, we have been investing in future growth business, our e-commerce and direct to consumer operations. <laughs> Let me draw your attention over to this other clip. I love every once in a while tapping into folks who are within that industry just to kind of see, you know, what's the temperature, see if I can decode some of the things that are being said. Well, Esso of Esso's World, who is a well-known industry manager of a lot of folks, had a conversation with Ray Daniels, an exec, who we've seen content from his podcast on this channel before, and they're discussing these very layoffs and what it may mean for the music industry. The entire staff is getting let go, and that's across the board. Labels is merging, whole entire departments mm. is getting fired. They're swapping one department. Well, you keep that department, we're gonna fire that department. We're gonna keep this department, we're gonna fire that department. What the hell is going on, bro? I feel bad because there are great, great, great people that work yep. at these labels. Yeah. Great people Legends. who care 
who don't care about content. Not no, not the legends. The legends are gonna be fine. Okay. I'm talking about those people in the video department, yep. the people in the radio department, the people in the promo marketing, promo marketing promo. Pro department who have a million who came in the music business with these bright eyes and great yep. ideas mm. and didn't have a chance to get it off the ground. Yep. And I want to say, I first of all, I feel bad for those people. Yep. I want to tell those people the best thing that happened to you is what just happened to you. Mm. And here's why: because your phone's gonna stop ringing. And you're going to realize how much of your time you've been putting up for sale for whatever your salary was. Mm. Everybody in the music business is not going to make it. Sometimes it's going to take you 10 years to get back to where you needed to be. That's it took a fact. me 10 years, right? But the biggest thing that you got what you got to know is this. A lot of y'all is going to get another shot. When you get another shot, understand what happened to you this first time. When you go back into that label, make be able and understand you have to build relationships outside yes. and start building things for yourself or while you're at that label. Don't ever forget that because yes. they because if they did it once, they'll So there's two things I want to say about this one. Cause they, you know, they they speaking very candidly about there being people who are part of these layoffs that don't deserve to be laid off. There are people who do amazing work, who help these artists out, who are trying to make a difference in this crazy industry. And amongst those are some of the folks getting laid off who will be presented with other job opportunities. I'm sure that there are people who are more experienced, people who have a better reputation, but I feel like it's going to be a small percentage of all of these people who are getting laid off from not just Universal, but Sony Music and others that are going to be offered a similar job, especially like I said, with the emergence of AI, why would they ever spend anything for something that AI can do for them for nothing? I wonder how much of this is going to be people who are trading positions between different labels and how many of this is going to be people who came from that traditional system who are going to try to create new businesses that target independence. We'll talk about that in just a second, though. Also this week in the news, as many of you know, Universal removed their catalog from TikTok. But in addition to removing the catalog, they're now starting to even TikTok it is, is starting to remove people who might even just be a signed songwriter to UMG. Even if the song is not something that has ran through UMG, just because you have ties to UMG, TikTok is getting rid of it all because they don't even want the opportunity for it to be something that can hinder their future plans, I assume. It says TikTok is losing even more songs over its quarrel with UMG as the social media network is starting to remove songs published by UMG. The company confirmed to TechCrunch on Tuesday, the row between the two companies began last month that you when UMG announced that it failed to reach a deal with TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, over royalties. As a result, TikTok had to remove songs owned or distributed by UMG by January 31st. Now, the company has to remove songs that contain compositions controlled by Universal Music Publishing Group. TikTok says all songs that have been written are co-written by a songwriter signed to Universal Music Publishing Group must be removed and all videos that feature these songs must be muted. The change means that if a songwriter is signed to UMPG contributed to even a small part of a song owned by another label, TikTok would have to remove it from its platform. Music producers, rappers, and singers, are you looking to get some constructive feedback on your newest music? Joining Critique My Beats is super easy. All you gotta do is reserve a pass to critiquemybeats.com. Click on book a slot and choose if you wanna get one beat review, two beat reviews on our live stream every Monday. Best beat and best song of the night is going to win a cash prize. Join us at critiquemybeats.com. TikTok is breaking all ties and a part of me feels like it has to do with Universal's new program that they're launching. It's subscription-based program. For more information, we're going to navigate here to our friend Lloyd Lang, the legend. We've had him here for an interview before. You can go follow him on Instagram. You can always rely on him to give you insight about what's coming up next. He breaks this whole situation down and introduces another conversation that we're going to move to, which is Universal Music Group 
putting all of their music behind a subscription paywall. So there has been some very interesting developments in the War of the Roses between UMG and TikTok. UMG made the bold announcement that it has created its own content platform for content creators to access the UMG catalog on a subscription basis between, I think it's $10 to $29 per month with a number of caveats depending on where you want and how you want to use the content. Now that's a very bold move on the part of Universal. But a move like that could not have been made overnight. Somebody's gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Universal Music Group, in the midst of them going to bat for artists, supposedly, allegedly, in the name of trying to get money up off of TikTok, has been developing behind the scenes their own program, their own subscription-based platform. They're going to allow the customers to pay them directly for licenses that allow them individually to use the music in their video content, regardless of the platforms. But as you see before, TikTok is going to put a stop to that because they now understand the kind of business that Universal is trying to play. I'm going to let Lloyd Lang finish this one off. An app like that can be created overnight. So we know that the move to pull down the music from TikTok was a premeditated strategy on the part of UMG. But how has that affected um, TikTok? If you realize TikTok has not even flinched, TikTok is quietly <laughs> focused on making its neck and rolling out its next move. And what is TikTok's next move? If you realize TikTok has been asking long form and medium form content providers mm -hmm. on its service to be horizontal, why would a social media app be, uh, that is known for vertical content asking people to go horizontal? It could only mean one thing that TikTok has plans to go into the smart TV ecosystem mm. to access traditional advertisers as well as to position itself as a player in the interactive e-commerce experience that will be rolled out across smart TVs in the coming years. Sure. Somebody's gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna Ooh. tell it. So, TikTok is obviously going on the offensive. I mean, they got some issues today that we got to talk about as well. But TikTok is going on the offensive when they see Universal Music Group, who is obviously the most powerful collection of labels or umbrella that houses all these different labels. When they see them put up a, a subscription service like that, that is that is a declaration of war. That is a I am going to take one of the biggest benefits that your user base has on your platform with the music. I'm going to go ahead and just get that money directly. And we're not even going to break no bread in the process. Nasty, nasty work. What I think is interesting about them. And we're going to talk about the subscription service is that when you see the pricing of it, it makes it really interesting how they were supposedly fighting tooth and nail with TikTok to get more payment for what their artists got. Yet and still, when you see the subscription service for access to over 50,000 songs for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, it kind of makes you scratch your head. That in itself is a very bold move on the part of TikTok. Now we have to realize this is really a battle between David and Goliath. David being TikTok and Goliath being UMG. We have to keep in mind that TikTok is still a very young, relatively very young player in the media industry and they are making some very bold, bold moves against the giant known as UMG. Mm. How that going to play out for both of them? Only the future can tell us, but there is one thing for certain. In this digital age, the man who owns content is no longer king. It is the man who owns the algorithm. True. And so all it takes for, you, for TikTok to push back against UMG is to make it twice as hard for content that is using umg catalog music Facts. to make it twice as hard for that content to get visibility within the tiktok ecosystem that's all they have to do <laughs> because in the age of ai the man who owned the algorithm is king come on now Somebody leave it to lloyd lane gonna he's gonna always break it down and tell absolute truth now i thought it was really interesting that over the week i kept seeing ads for this universal music creator and I usually ignore ads. But when I look down here at the date, it's been rolling since October 16th, 2023. Now, any company that is generating as many billions as a UMG obviously is going to have backup plans when they go in to negotiate with the TikTok. I don't think there's any kind of conspiracy theory going on here. I just think that this is something they probably wanted to do anyways, which is why they made it such a public spectacle of how TikTok doesn't want to pay their artists. 
or AKA just pay UMG. This ad kind of wraps up what this service is all about. Try not to get hypnotized by all of the cheery music because we're still dealing with these gangsters called UMG. Finding the perfect track for your content can be daunting, challenging, messy, a nightmare. Universal Music for Creators makes it simple. Affordable subscriptions to suit your content. No claims, no stress, just fresh new music for creators. Lightning fast search, 50,000 tracks, 200,000 sound effects, music from your favorite films, TV shows, and now available for your videos. Harmonize your vision, turn up your creativity, create your universe, and close those tabs. These niggas think they splice. That's funny. That's hilarious. How much? How much? Because I'm sure there's some of you now that are like, oh, yeah, now I'm getting ready to go back and do my damn dances to the Taylor Swift songs. Now I can get back. I can get back in my Drake bag. Leaning. Now some of y'all getting excited. You're like, that's all I got to pay is $10 a month. These fools have gone direct to consumer, ladies and gentlemen. They have a creator program here. This is not an ad. This is a boo. 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 <laughs> Talk about chopping up the product and just trying to get as much money off of it as you can after you've already diluted the entire value of the product. It is insane looking at this popping up. I think it's also pretty insane when you see this. This just happened today. I'm recording this on a Thursday of the week before, but TikTok is asking users when they log in to call Congress and boycott the supposed plan that is out there to ban the platform. I told you them UMGs as gangsters, they're not playing fair. Now, this warning said, stop a TikTok shutdown. Congress is planning a total ban of TikTok. We know that even beyond the UMG conflict that it seems like America has been trying to get rid of, at least the government has been trying to get rid of TikTok or at least get them to sell it off uh, from their owners of ByteDance. We know that that's been going on for some time now. However, it's really interesting with the timing of the launch of this are the uptick in the launch of this and all of this news that comes up that now there's another bill that is getting closer uh, to being passed. It says, speak up now before your government strips 170 million Americans of their constitutional right to free expression. This will damage millions of businesses, destroy the livelihoods of countless creators across the country and deny artists an audience. Let Congress know what TikTok means to you and tell them to vote no. DIYers, the writing is on the wall, my friends. If you can't see it by now, if you have a desire to make a career out of making music and you came up your entire life, maybe you as a little kid, you was watching 106 in Park. Maybe as you got a little bit older, you started to see the rise of an artist like Drake or, you know, your favorites and Travis Scott, whatever the case may be. If you're looking at this with those same rose colored tinted glasses and you think that this industry is what it was, I'm sorry to inform you. Santa Claus ain't real. <laughs> I'm sorry to inform you that when you look at the way that the corporates who have the money are starting to, first of all, cheapen the perception around what the value of their main product is. It's in their name, Universal Music Group. When they're trying to convince consumers about what it's not worth, but at the same time selling subscriptions that have to highlight what it's worth to content creators, you know something's going on financially that they're trying their best to combat. Now, that affects artists every level of the label, especially when they're starting to lay off people. They're laying off people who are part of different departments that are no longer going to be assigned to the artists that are signed to these labels. So you're going to eventually have to drop these artists off of the labels. Now, here's my warning. This is my so serious warning to DIYers out here. And it comes back to the Joe Button initial statement. With these firings, you know that the industry is going under a huge transformation. However, that transformation doesn't quite affect independent artists. 
However, everybody that got fired, let's just say just with Universal, what happened at Sony Music 2, just Universal is not going to go find another industry job. No, they're going, some of them are going to try to establish their own businesses, some of which will be good for the online creator independent economy if they choose to get into this independent space. A lot of them who have been indoctrined, who have gone through the traditional route of that music industry that has devalued music, that looks at artists as just pieces of real estate, they're now going to be advertising their businesses and startups to you. I said a few months ago, we're getting ready to approach the most predatory state we have ever seen for independent artists. Why? Because independent artists are the ones who are selling. They're the ones who are selling direct to consumer. They're the ones who are selling merchandise. They're the ones that are still consistently doing the work to get, you know, whether it's the show money, whether it's just the physical sales of their music, whatever the case may be, the touring. And these folks know that. Matter of fact, some of them have been hired in their original position to look at what some of you are doing in hopes of maybe signing you. If they couldn't sign you, maybe learn from you. Now those people are going to be in charge of businesses that are going to be so pro-independent, you're gonna think, how could I ever say no to this? Be careful, be careful, because there's gonna be a lot of vested interest in your independence that you're like, man, this person I used to work for, with this person and this person, they used to be, you know, hands on with Drake, they wanna work with me. Don't be a choose me, because it's gonna be really detrimental to what you're building. These people only wanna sign people that don't know they don't need to be signed. You got something special, keep building upon that. It is your job to build out this business, especially if you're an independent DIYer. DIYer. And hell, the way this direction of independence is going, we may have to just, re we may have to just replace the word independent with DIYer. It's getting ugly out here, DIYers, but those are my thoughts. You let me know yours. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.